but at the same time with, with the Zacco attacks, like you have all the chance, the you know governments around Europe are saying we condemn the attack, but they don't name who is making the attack. No, so they realize that there is something wrong, but they don't have, they don't want to um, say or name it because they don't want to risk other alliances on other like higher levels. So, do we like who, how shall we? or evaluate these condolences as they are, you know, like void, completely void on so many different levels. This is, you know, it's, it's getting completely out of hands because Turkey is targeting anything that moves and these mountains belong to the people, you know, to the villagers, not just, you know, it's not just a, 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 a war zone. And they, Turkey has made it a war zone. While we see also the silence from the Kurdistan regional government, you know, Iraqi government is really, really vocal. They're really, really angry. They they are calling for Turkey to leave Iraqi Kurdistan, and uh, but the the Kurdistan regional government is silent. And this is also it's becoming super problematic as well. You know because they're not protecting really the people, they're just protecting their interests. We know that Turkey and the Kurdistan regional government are making a lot of business about oil, and uh, you know, especially from oil from Kirkuk and all of these places, but they're not really protecting the people. So all of this is creating like a lot of tension on the ground, you know, and it's not just about the war itself. Um, Iraqi, the Iraqi uh, are asking the Security Council to take a position about this. They also seen an increment in um, bases like forward FOB forward operation base of Turkey that have increased of like like two or three that were like maybe five or six years ago to over thirty and these are the ones that we know. The, uh, it's completely militarized. No, we know that around Zako, around like um, uh, Semalka, around all of these areas, you know, there are a lot of operational base that are like that are arresting people as well. We know people getting arrested by Turkey in Iraqi Kurdistan. The call of the airspace has been already asked already yeah, during Afrin in 2018 when Turkey invaded Afrin and also after with the Serekanya because this was like it was a very kind of large use of drones uh, and airstrikes and everything else. Unfortunately, that has never succeeded. Like a lot, a lot of people has asked that. Um, I don't think that this unfortunately will happen. I think it's a really uh, um, right quest in order, you know, to at least give the chance to the uh, Syrian, to the autonomous administration to defend itself, because it's a question of defend itself. But I'm not too sure that uh, the international community will agree, that, especially because of these uh, ties that we described before, you know, economical ties, military ties, NATO alliances ties, and all of these kind of things. The truth is that, you know, if uh, uh, there is going to be a re uh, like a large movement of, you know, people, public opinions, like taken to the streets, maybe that could happen. I don't have so much trust that the international community will stand up and defend and make what is necessary. The election in Turkey, and according to the latest polls, Erdogan is not doing so, so well. So a strong victory for him would be very, very helpful. You know, we've seen it throughout, you know, in the past years, you know, how this is, is a strategy that Erdogan has employed throughout in the past 10 years. Now, um, probably I think that there is a willingness for him, like he really would like to invade, but I'm not like, I, we, I hope that he will not, but I'm sure that Turkey is preparing towards that.